Hello Westwood Fat Adapted family and welcome back to the Keto Kitchen's Keto Guide. First thing I want to say is um, I'm sorry about the rubbish sort of around you. I've tried to clear it up as best as possible. We're actually sat in my office right now because this is where the best lighting is. Secondly, you might hear some noise. I can't do much about it. There's a freezer down here and freezers make a lot of noise. But with that being said, today we are talking about whether you can do keto or not when you are lactose intolerant. There are two types of lactose intolerant. There's the very scarce few, like me, who will not have anything with lactose in it because we don't want the uncomfortableness that comes afterwards. And then there's the many people that will just eat a block of cheese and then just deal with the consequences and get on with it. Um, you lot are absolutely mental. I absolutely envy you. So lactose intolerance is, well, it's, it's an intolerance to lactose. Lactose being a sugar that is found in milk and therefore found in a lot of dairy products. And the level of intolerance will vary from person to person. The symptoms of lactose intolerance can include gas, bloating, diarrhea, stomach cramps and pains, stomach rumbling and nausea and lactose intolerance can impair in anyone of any age. For me, I got lactose intolerance like five months after I started keto or so, and keto had absolutely nothing to do with me getting lactose intolerance. What had happened was I had a really bad bout of IBS, and then because I was basically, the moment something would go in my mouth, it was coming out the other end. And this, this went on for probably about a month and a half or so, you know, once the IBS went, once once that attack calmed down, I was still getting all of these symptoms and I couldn't understand what it was. But obviously eating keto and having high fats, I was getting a lot of it from dairy. What had actually happened was because I was flushing things out of my system very quickly, I was basically just wiping bacteria, good or bad, which made me severely intolerant to lactose. Uh, the main foods that include lactose are milk, cream, cheese, whey, curds, and yogurt. Now, in reality, lactose is found in a lot more foods than the one I've just labelled, but I labelled the most common ones that are used in ketosis. Just because lactose is found in a lot of dairy doesn't mean that all dairy is out of the question, because this depends on two things, your tolerance level to lactose and the amount of lactose in the food. So, uh, for example, in terms of like cheese, the type of cheese and its age plays a massive part on how much lactose is in it. So aged cheeses have less lactose, therefore you're gonna get less symptoms from them. This is because the longer the bacteria is left in the cheese to kind of just do its own thing, the lower the amount of lactose there is in it because it's eaten up because it's a sugar and bacteria feeds off of sugar. There's, there's more science behind that, but I'm not going to delve into that. It's not needed. So eventually, if the cheese is aged enough, someone like me with a severe intolerance to lactose can eat it without having symptoms or having very mild symptoms. So cheeses like Parmesan or mature cheddar are meant to be a completely safe bet for those that are lactose intolerant to be able to eat and not have very many symptoms. So that would mean that the younger, moister cheeses, sort of like Brie, Red Leicester, Camembert, that kind of thing, are higher in lactose because they're younger and therefore will wreak more havoc on someone with lactose intolerance. But at the end of the day, everybody's different. Personally, for me, I cannot eat aged cheese. It's actually, it's, it's, it's bizarre. The stronger the cheese is, so the more aged it is, the older it is, the less I can eat it. The three main foods for me that I, I cannot have because of my lactose intolerance is milk, heavy cream or double cream, and cheddar. And funnily enough, the younger cheeses like mozzarella, brie, um, red Leicester, even cream cheese, I can have with little to no effect. In reality, there is really only one way without going to a doctor's to find out if you are lactose intolerant to a food and that's to eat a food and then monitor how you feel for the next sort of couple of hours, whether you get cramps or bloating or diarrhea or anything like that. If you do, you're intolerant to it. 
Now, I know that anyone watching this with lactose intolerance, you know all of this, but I just kind of wanted to catch up the people that maybe didn't know what lactose intolerance is like. But in terms of keto, keto is about getting good, healthy fats. And it doesn't have to come from food that is high in lactose. There are foods like avocados, there's avocado oil, coconut oil, there's nuts, there's chia seeds, there's flax seeds, there's fatty fish, there's fatty meats, there's eggs, there's coconuts on their own, and many, many more high fat foods that don't have lactose in them. So getting enough fat whilst avoiding dairy is very, very possible. And there are other things like um, Greek yogurt and butter that are so low in lactose that they shouldn't affect you. But if you're craving dairy and you don't want to get rid of dairy from your diet but you are lactose intolerant, there are alternatives. So for example, for me, um, as you may have seen in some of my other videos, I tend to use a brand called Arla and they do lacto-free heavy or double creams, they do lacto-free cheddar. Uh, there are quite a few companies now jumping on the lacto-free sort of bandwagon as well, which is awesome. And although the cheddar is low in lactose, uh, naturally, they make sure it has no lactose or little to no lactose in it. So if you're like me and you have severe intolerances, you can absolutely have these without any side effects. The most important thing to do with these sort of products, if you see them, is to always check the carb levels because they might have done some things to tamper with it and add sugar in. You just don't know. It's always worth checking. The other interesting thing is a lot of the time, providing they don't add ingredients, they are lower in carbs, these, these lacto-free ones, because lactose is a sugar. So if lactose isn't there, they're going to be lower in carbs, which is a blessing for some people, but it's a curse for me because... So many people buy lacto-free stuff because it's got like 0.5 of a gram less of carbs. So my supermarket is always out of it and we're literally having to travel around supermarkets, you know, in the week to find lacto-free cream for me and they're all gone, which is great. And things like having coffee and not wanting to remove dairy, there are always alternatives. So there's like coconut cream, coconut milk, almond milk, soy milk. And if you're cooking and butter does set you off, you can cook in oils like coconut oil, you can cook in animal grease, all these sort of things. And in terms of cheese, there are so many different types of cheeses out there that it is worth trying quite a few different ones and seeing what effect they have to see if you can stomach them. Because at the end of the day, the worst thing you're going to get is diarrhea and anyone that's lactose intolerant, you've been there, you've done that, you've got the t-shirt. So it is worth trying to see if there are some you can have with that don't give you this stomach upset. If you're, if you're struggling to get enough fat in your diet without dairy, refer to a video that I've linked below that tells you how to get more fat into your diet. What affects me might not affect you and vice versa. So it is always worth sort of doing your own little experiments on yourself to see what you can and can't tolerate. And failing that, go to a doctor's get a proper test done where they make you drink milk or whatever it is and then see what your symptoms are which is much nastier just it's better to just trial and error yourself because you know you better than anyone else does and lastly i do recommend getting a little bit of lactose in your diet every day uh, the best for this is greek yogurt because it's also a probiotic which means it helps with good gut bacteria but having just a little bit of lactose every day does kind of help your tolerance go up a little bit so I just have like a spoonful of yogurt every day or sometimes I might have a little bit of a cheese that sets me off things like that just to try and keep your tolerance up in the same way that people with hay fever will have honey so I am sorry I can't give you the exact answers of what cheeses will and won't set you off because we're all different but yes you absolutely can do keto and be lactose intolerant at the same time oh yeah I said that like it's a choice yes you can have lactose intolerance and do keto. It is absolutely possible. I've been doing it for the last four years with absolutely no problems. That's all for this video. Leave a like if you found it interesting, insightful or helpful. Subscribe if you're inclined and if you hit the bell, it will tell you when I upload. Any questions, any comments, any queries, anything down below. Keep calm, keto on. Thanks for watching.